Should we sit down and look at each other? Mm. Yeah, no, we should so stop and just relax. Yeah. I mean, yeah. relax. Yeah. Like, like relax, like we were having yeah. earlier on about social media over here, whatever. Yeah. Whatever yeah. comes up. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, we just keep it open. So guys, we have been asked to come together as residents here um, with Côte d'Ivoire at Craft Burkett in Tronos. Am I saying that right? Tronos. 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 Um, to discuss our passion for dance. And this is a theme we've been given. And I'm wondering, is it, is it an appropriate theme for us to be discussing? Um, whether that is something that keeps with what we've done over the past two weeks um, and what our connections are with dance. What are your thoughts? <coughs> I don't think it's an appropriate theme. No. Because we've worked beyond that theme. We've worked with a passion for Tense lines, body, musical resonances, digital imagery, green screens. <coughs> yeah, we haven't worked with a singular passion for dance. Maybe it's more about the movements. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's maybe movement. So the, the, the word goes <coughs> away. Uh, intention. Okay. The movement, the intention of that movement. I'm a mover, I have an intention, and that's why it becomes dance. It not needs to, but I have the intention to do it. But you have maybe your movement. <coughs> And it become another thing. I don't know. I think the intention of the movement, how we put it together. So what do we have a passion for? You saying we have a passion for all those things you mentioned? What else do we have a passion for? As as artists who have come together on the Dance Ignition Lab. Well, for live work, perhaps. Live work. It's all in live. All of what we're doing is is live. It's not either performatively live or in the live action, the live processes of the work. I think that's where the the passion. Is that that's a big word. Yes. Can we talk about suffering? We can talk about suffering if you want to. Etymologically, the passion of Christ refers to the suffering of Christ. And I like reminding myself of the root of the word passion in that sense. Someone once said to me, that's your passion in life drawing, years and years ago. And I thought that was a bit presumptuous of me. <laughs> but it's an interesting word. So have you been mm -hmm. suffering here over the past two weeks? That's my question. <coughs> Not. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe passion because uh, is not maybe the word because it in is like uh, includes sensations, intangible sensations that we don't can can't, can't possibly de describe. Uh, so we have if we are going to put words to this passion is the discipline of doing something that I want to do. It's not a force. I'm doing because I am. I want to, and it's not like passion, passion. But I doing because I like it. I really like the work too. Mm. But I feel passion is very big. I think there's been a, a, a suffering of uh, sleep deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, maybe, and, and, and others, but no, um, maybe a, a one-pointedness or focus on a subliminal idea of dance and 
um, motion, I would say, has brought us all together. And that's the one thing that's blurred the lines in some way between our disciplines. It's been one, it's definitely been on my, on my mind a lot, is, um, is that, but, um, mm, yeah. Do you think there has been a blurring of lines with between <coughs> the disciplines? Um, obviously, with the Dance Ignition Lab, the idea is to, to bring different artists from different disciplines, different perspectives who don't know each other together to, in a room to see what might ignite, what sparks might happen, what that means for dance movement motion and what way it will inform your work. So is it a blurring that happens at that point, do you think? Maybe a fusion, a fusion, fusion. Stronger word, blurring suggests that. smearing. Blurry. Smearing. Smearing. Maybe we're smeared, no. tainted by other people's. I'd say yes. Yeah. I mean, sculpture is becoming musical. Sculpture is becoming dance like. Digital drawing is going to a live drawing session. Dancing is becoming abstract on a digital projection. The dancer won't be seen. It's merely an outline that gets exploded. Mm. So I, I think in all cases, that's just some examples. Yeah, and what else? Um, what other kind of? Let's let's talk from our own discipline perspectives. Um, engaging with dance or movement. Um, what has what what have you gained or learned or taken from movement that you know that exploration of <coughs> movement or that inclusion of movement as a main theme or dance as a main theme in the week what what are you taking from that into your work into your discipline well, during uh, this residency we were able to work with dancers so as a new media artist, I was able to watch them dance and collect data about their movement and try to not only represent it, represent it but create uh, animation uh, with uh, the movement uh, they will make. So it was like a superposition and a way to, to explore um, their movement, uh, external movement and maybe also Inter interior movement. And was, was the movement, the dance, which you anticipated, expected? I'm just wondering, you're coming from a perspective of a, of a new media artist, you were looking for people, to, dancers, what, was it what you expected? Well, I, w I wasn't sure of what I, what I wanted or what I expected because um, my background in art, uh, I have seen a lot of performance and um, it's, I think it's uh, what I have seen also during the, the residency. Uh, it's not, uh, there is a lot of improvisation, not, um, co uh, it's not a choreographic dance and uh, the work and uh, dance uh, Fagus made with um, his uh, sculpture uh, made me think a lot of about drawing and uh, a lot of things about uh, uh, it made me think about a lot of things I can uh, link to uh, to the fine art. So it was very interesting in, in this sense also because uh, I'm drawing line with a computer and he's drawing the same thing in, in space and he makes movement in space and I do the same in a, in a virtual world. So it, it was very interesting from this point of view. How about you, Jamie? What, what are you thinking in terms of your <coughs> engagement with dance, movement, motion into your practice? Um, I think I've been able to pull out notions um, that are not directly related to sound. Um, much more about vibration basically and, and um, 
resonance and be able to see that manifest in the sculptural form via uh, collaborative efforts. Um, I guess it's, uh, you know, the, um, the motion and choreography of how I interact with my equipment and also to try and pull elements of an improvisational language that's based in movement and motion and transpose that to various other mediums um, has has been really interesting. Um, also the um, the mapping of a uh, in, uh, interpretive mapping of uh, a, a movement being observed with the uh, uh, frames and, and and so on, and bringing that into a, a non musical but instrument context, and then being able to interpret that as you know what is this you know is this mm -hmm. a is this a spatial representation of something? Is this a an interpretive score for for movement? Is this a map of what uh, parts of the body should be worked with at different points? Is it temporal? You know. Um, so yeah, I've I've liked the kind of the undertones and overtones of abstract concepts that have maybe directly been related and attached to something in the beginning, but have became dislocated throughout the process and that's made them very uh, um, accessible. Mm. And you guys, any responses to the theme, like the kind of the, the dance, the <coughs> exhibition, even the other, other disciplines coming, <coughs> both of you work with movement a lot. As dancers, as performance artists, um, what 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 penetrated? I suppose is the question. What 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 what? Yeah, let's talk about the dance question in the movement question. What movement? What are you taking from, in terms of movement, to bring into your practice from this? That it can be redesignable. You can redesign things through other disciplines and interact because it's an interaction. Before, maybe you are used to see the performer as a main source, is it important? Mm -hmm. And the music and the scenery is the background. But in that sense, it's, it, it's only one man's show. Hmm. Or a woman. <laughs> or a woman, sure, yes. But uh, in, with other disciplines, it begins in the same or, uh, horizontal plane. So it's not the vertical yeah. or the pyramidal. Uh, Hierarchic. 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 <laughs> so you are in the same terms with the different ideas. And that's the important thing to try to do collaborate and try to mix up and then take the best and release the things that you don't need mm. but at the same time you are keeping all together you are putting all in the same place, place. Mm. so and in terms of uh, your physical practice Cynthia what, what are you going to take away you know it has there been a shift or or in in terms of your going through this process interacting with the disciplines, are you taking, is there, is there going to be an impact on your personal practice as a dance artist? Absolutely. It makes me feel that maybe I, I need the collaboration more than ever. Um, but at the same time I can learn of that collaboration to continue my work even if I don't be capable to cooperate uh, or collaborate because circumstances or maybe because working in different places absolutely I can learn about it I can embrace it and do it in mine it's like my technique 
the dance technique, I can embrace other techniques and I can put it together and make it a complete performer. Okay, that's an interesting idea, a complete performer. What is a complete performer? <coughs> is, it, is it somebody who is engaged wholly, physically, with, with um, a concept or, or discipline? And, and, um, someone who isn't bound by a definition of what their craft is, mm. who, who can perform, who knows how to manifest something, how to make themselves visible, to be seen, to be seen in their element of their craft and not, you know, being someone else when the eyes are on them. Uh, yeah, certainly a son who has skills for sure, but isn't bound by them. Um, I mean, I, I've always enjoyed dance when I like the performer. Never mind the technique. I mean, it helps when the technique is very good, but when I see someone even enjoying their performance, I've seen performers and God, they look miserable. They look under the cosh. <laughs> they look under the cosh of the choreography I mean I don't come from that background and so the the notion of um, I mean I've done a few things like where I've had to do the thing hasn't I haven't been the author but I love seeing a performer who has in some way owned the work made it their own and yeah that's I think a lot why I like seeing individual solo performances people are more you can see more of them maybe they come closer to being themselves. Hmm. Not always. But the inter yeah. interdisciplinary aspects of who we are. We have different identities and put it together is to be complete. Because dance don't define me as a person, but if I have a lot of collaborations, it can define me like a total person and a total performer but not only the technique defines me as a performer mm. this has to be rounded so following on from like this idea of performance and, and what we enjoy <coughs> in terms of experiencing it in performance maybe maybe we can talk a little bit about dance or movement or performance that has inspired us in some way, things we've seen that have made a difference uh, to ourselves as artists. Well, during this residency to, to see the Chunky move, uh, movie was interesting. Um, the way uh, um, the dancer can move in interaction with the visual uh, on displayed on the floor was very interesting. Uh, I saw it at the beginning of the residency, so I think in, it's um, it's part of the thing that um, made me do what I have done during the, the last uh, last week. It's okay, we gave you a different perspective on <coughs> what the possibilities were, or this is Chunky Moves Glow, isn't it, where uh, the, the, the projections are tracing the dancers. Uh, well, it was the was position of the camera and the, the way uh, how, how the, what, what was interesting is the way uh, how the, the flow was used as a screen and uh, also the different uh, scene that was um, display and uh, the, trans the transition between one, uh, each one of them. Mm. Anyone else got anything, any other work that? Uh, oh, um, did you know a dancer, did you know a dancer called Simone Litchfield back in Ireland? She was Australian. No, no, I don't know. She danced with Kush came and uh, like 90, mid nineties, early Kush came. Mm -hmm. Great dancer and always looked very in her performance. And she was an amazing performer, and she's one reason why I 
We've gone to a lot of towns. Yeah. Oh, she was fantastic. I mean, someone subsequently said, a girlfriend of mine says, you're in love with her. <laughs> and yeah, in some ways it's, they were it's, right. It's the muse, isn't she it? She was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but she really was alive. Her face was alive when she yeah. performed. She had brilliant technique. I mean, yeah. I didn't know many dancers then. I was maybe doing some workshops. And when I subsequently met other dancers, she moved back to Australia. And I subsequently met other people and like, I realized, you know, really everyone thought, you know, she was fantastic and technically she had so much ability, but beyond all that, she just looked like she was made to be on stage. Mm. She was like in her element, um, looked happy. You know, it looked, it's a happy place. <laughs> looked really there and uh, I met her like in a workshop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was great. The first time I met her, I was like, Starstruck. I mean, really, I mean, I went to say, you know, I think it works great, and I nearly fell out of my feet and my tongue fell out. Yeah. And then I managed to, like, I took a class with her mm. and managed to articulate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's actually, like, where some of my passion for dance is. Like, when you, not just because of her, but having that feeling for seeing someone perform. Yeah. Like, I'd go to Crush Cam just to see her perform. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting. When something, when something connects with you um, right here, when you, when, you, when you experience that performance, I, I think I told you about that performance I saw during the summer in Germany. Um, Alexandra Weierstrahl's Matter of Ages. And I've been saying to everybody, you have to see this. It was... It was my jaw was dropped throughout the whole performance and I was just completely in awe of it and I was wondering, you know, afterwards uh, my colleagues were sitting either side of me, I was like, oh, I, 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 I can't, <coughs> wow, and they were like, oh, it was alright, yeah, it was, yeah, it was interesting. And I, I, I was so stunned that they didn't have the same, well, no, we're not stunned, but you know, they didn't have that same reaction, that same response. And I thought, is this down to my interest? Is this down to my, my own kind of personal need in terms of being a dance viewer or engaging with movement? And, and I really identified what it was that made it happen for me. It wasn't just the performance or the performer. Because there were there was five dancers I think in it and they were all wonderful and and I could critique each one of them and none of them stood out. Don't think they were intended to stand out. It was all the different elements mm. and how they came together in that space at that time. There was the scenography was so well thought through. It was the texture was beautiful. The lighting enhanced it. The sound. So they had this like black plastic. Um, sort of mountainous terrain, it was this waving black plastic all the way across, just the sound of that crinkling and the movement of the dancers in it and the effect that that had on their movement and their responses and then they, there was this gold foil at the end of it and, and just the lights reflecting and the, the soundtrack, the sound, the music that was used, how it all came together that's what made it a successful performance for me. That those different elements, and I'm thinking, I, 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 I proposed this residency <coughs> a while back before I saw any of this, and it is all about bringing these different disciplines together. Maybe that's my personal way of engaging with movement and dance. Maybe that's my personal way of kind of mm. indulging myself. I like to see where they all meet where it all meets. Um, I had a conversation with with, um, with the, one of the directors who used to work at Wexford Opera House in Ireland and he was saying to me, opera is where all the high arts meet. You've got the best of visual, you've got the best, of, you know, the, 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 the visual, the classical, the movement, the theatre. It all meets in that space and that draws you in and it's it's 
of its time and I still, I mean, my preference is for contemporary opera. I love contemporary opera. I love seeing how all these elements come together and I think this can happen also within contemporary dance. And of course, <coughs> when you, when you, when you put all those, yeah, when the sparks fly for you. Um, yeah, so that was my, my passion. I think that was where my, yeah, I felt the passion because I felt the suffering because I knew I wouldn't be able to repeat that, that feeling, that experience, you know, I felt that angst of not, the others not being able to be on the same page as me um, and them not feeling the same uh, amazement and awe um, yeah, and somehow uh, I, as a performer, dealing with this passion, I don't put it in other persons. I don't have it. I have. Um, I like performers, and I have my favorite performance. But my passion is the intensity of the movement the capability of my movement, how can this movement go from one place to the other. That's for me this sensation to, mm. to form this body in something mm. new. So I, I don't know, I feel like passion in, in, my, in my case became because as a living person that I want to to transform my body to something else. I don't know, I feel like, mm -hmm. but not, I don't really have a passion for other performance, but I feel like I can see a perform, performance, a complete performance, that you can see the elements and you are happy to see that they are in touch, in communion. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to refer you back to Renfrew Ferry in the River Clyde in Glasgow, which is a, a small venue that I've seen a, a guitarist, uh, one of my massive inspirations, a jazz fusion guitarist, Alan Holdsworth. And the content, the music, and the fact that he's a legato technique master is kind of irrelevant, really. It was what witnessing a conjuration and a complete disorientation of um, what I was seeing compared to what I was hearing and what I was feeling compared to all of this is fueled such a, a, a massive inquiry into what this in between us is. Um, and yeah, you know, this guy has been gigging for 50 odd years, you know, and I didn't think I was ever going to see him. Um, finally came to, came to Glasgow. And, um, you know, it, he started his first his first song, and um, uh, it looked as if he was going to mess up and make mistakes all the time. You know, he looked really shaky, really unsure, really nervous, you know, da da da. And what you were hearing was this liquid fluidity, this absolute accomplished otherworldliness manifest in sound, regardless whether it's guitar, regardless whether it's jazz fusion, regardless whether it's him. And that is a uh, the quality that still invigorates and inspires me to this day, and I think it always will. It just so happens it's got a, a certain temporal and uh, geographic location, mm. but it's um, I think it's 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 ever expanding and evolving. That sensation, if you want to call it that, that I experienced that night. It's something you carry with you, isn't it? It's and um, and kind of. Well, for me, I know that this recent experience, I've carried it with me and it's kind of driven me. I feel, still feel that, wow, that kind of... <coughs> a 
emotional, physical manifestation of a performance. You know, mm. you, it's there. It's there and it still excites me to talk about it. It's still, and I try, and I wonder, you know, what responsibility do we have in terms of communicating that to others? Because, yeah, so I, I am excited, I am, I am passionate mm. about this. Um, I happen to have a job where I, I, it is my responsibility to communicate dance to others who are not engaged with dance. Um, but how, how do we, I mean, what is it our responsibility? What is our responsibility here? Or is it a personal indulgence? <laughs> mm. Well, I don't know if I'm answering that directly because I, I think um, it's kind of got, but I will try to answer it. Because, uh, it goes off on a tangent. That's yeah, well, I, I begin on a tangent, just go okay. back to like what we each got. Mm. I mean, I work in, would say movement, sometimes more dancey, sometimes more sculptural. I dance, you know, in workshops with colleagues, people I know, people I don't know, get to know them, I find it's a great way to get to know people quickly and be quite open and friendly. I've never quite found that in the visual art area, where I work a lot. Um, so I think there's something about the dance practice and movement bodily practices that opens you up a lot. To other people and you're inevitably maybe going to be a bit more smiley. Mm. Not, no, it's, it's not an absolute but sometimes I've thought about that and so perhaps in this circumstance the, the collaboration is possible from different disciplines with the one currency of the body as people being fairly open and have an un understanding of each other's um, interest or an empathy for it. So, but in this case, while working that way, my own movement and sculpture and drawing and having lots of invisible projects in my head that will never be realised, <coughs> to be collaborating with other people allows that possibility, those combinations. It's just pragmatic. I mean, you can have all the ideas, but they're not necessarily be able to realise them just due to time, not just technical capacity, time, also, um, the other issue of people liking people to be singular. You know, administrative bodies mm -hmm. liking people to have a singular discipline and not being able to uh, quite understand people who work in many. And so it's quite, it's been the collaborative thing of this has been the main thing I've immersed in, in a way. I mean, I've come with my interest projects, but been collaborating with different people and just open to my work. Um, so that's been a thing. What was your question? It was about was our responsibility. So then the responsibility, maybe the responsibility then is to um, accept that in my own interest, collaborate allow those interests to blossom to come to the fore through collaboration with others and not the more singular visual artist mm -hmm. approach that um, you know you can't realize everything mm -hmm. so maybe the responsibility to collaborate to allow broader interests to surface rather than reducing oneself to oneself and perhaps not allowing things to blossom and fuse and you know the, the, what's it the, the the sum, not allowing the sum of the potential of different people together to become greater than the parts. Mm. So in, in the case of this, I think there's definite lines to be pursued after the thing. Mm. Um, makes sense to keep in touch mm. to bring some of these to the fore. I know, we, you, you talk about working in in the, in the singular, I mean, and I know you were referring to a category, but also if we look at uh, working in isolation and coming into this kind of residency model, um, I, I just wonder how it is, just in a general sense, to, to bring 
to bring what you have and lay it on the table in terms of collaboration. How that felt for you to do. <coughs> um, yeah, and to live together with people you don't know for two weeks, which is, it's a very intimate setting. Um, you share meals, you share the same workspace, which is, wasn't the plan actually, because I mean, uh, there, you had so much room to use. What, I, what delighted me was to see that you all made a collective decision to share a studio. And we were talking earlier about having this shared space, a shared studio space, and I'd be interested to know, um, yeah, what it's like to bring yourself from, from your own place to a shared space, in terms of residency, whether that's just the domestic, how it is to live with each other, how it is to open yourself up with your art, or, or, and, and is there a place for this kind of residency model? I think it's, uh, as you say, you are, you have to communicate mm -hmm. to others, and it's the same with an artist. I think we have to communicate with the, the, the audience, with other artists, and to put one project in the spot. And this is my project. I want to communicate this project to you <coughs> without boundaries. Mm. Let the project fall down and the other pick up mm. pieces of that project. And maybe seeing that project take different forms and maybe pick up ideas to redesign your project, to mm. make it vi available to communicate to others. Because I think if you are communicating with another artist, some, with another experience, it's possible to, to interact. Well, and was it difficult for you to put your project down on the table and say... Yeah, it's personal. It's, yeah. It's, it's my baby. <laughs> it's something that I don't want to release. It's something that I, I want to keep for myself. Mm. But to put it is to to share, to be humble and try to, to do something with that because in other way it's going to be isolated mm. without communication. And if I'm going to put it to the audience, it has to be communicated. Mm. Anybody else have any comments in terms of laying it on the table? Well, I think it's a good way to explore new ideas, but also ideas we, we bring during the residency and see how this idea can influence the work of others, but also how these uh, ideas can evolve with the uh, work of uh, other resident. Uh, that uh, was, it's what uh, happened. Uh, during these uh, two, two weeks. Mm. I think um, from back to the question asked about the residents, <coughs> and you know, mm. it's like, I feel essentially what, what's happening is, you know, you're setting up a cooperative or a community in a temporary sense. And um, if those cogs are not turning then the, the higher arts of the residency, the higher output, which is the, the actual conceptual collaboration and performance strategies and you know all of that, if we're not fed, then we can't work. If we're not, if we're not combining in our <coughs> uh, essential needs um, as, 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 as nutrition and, you know, and, and social space and so on and so forth, if that's not in place, then it's, I think it's a bit ridiculous to expect um, a massive amount of energy output in the conceptual or artistic um, environment. So I think it, it, you know, really does work as a, as a living unit. Otherwise, I think, but you know, if everybody's on their own, and on the grassroots realm, if everybody's in their own world, then I, I think it, you're setting a tone for it being singular. Mm. And um, not so much combinatory ethics. So there's a lot of 
communication essentially <coughs> and, and a lot of trust is what you're saying yeah. as well. You have to, you, you all came here with trust. Yeah, with the people that, that you are working with. Well, I think two weeks Response. is a short time. Yeah. Mm. We don't seclude ourselves to slowly develop some little bits that we could share with each other in a week. I mean, in a new town that no one knows and a new mm. schedule and be very slow. Like, you know, two weeks is short, so they're, they're kind of tr throwing everything into the pot to see what will come out and make, make a lot of sense. Mm. It would be interesting to say it was said two, what, one month, you know, what if in the third week everyone isolated themselves and like, deliberately like work with what you have now, move it on a notch, bring it on a bit, come back to work with each other a week later. Could be a curious thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I, th I think we're in the position now to not quite like resolve a few things together, nail a few things down, which is the kind of plan for even tonight and probably tomorrow. But as an initial uh, ignition thing, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it makes it made a lot of sense to work together and be each other's resource. Because, you know, the, the, the dance studios are not visual art studios. Mm -hmm. And as a visual artist, you kind of need a, a wall, paper. Well, you don't, you don't, you don't need any of these things. You just, I mean, you, you can just work off other people. But, but that's in a product object production way. And two weeks is not the space of time really to produce mm -hmm. objects. No, which wasn't the point of no, this so at all. I think so, just the, yeah. the get in there together, work, see what people are doing, mm. build, have ideas, makes a lot of sense. But I think it's uh, it could have gone the other way, not trust in each other. Mm. So I think the importance here is the selection process, how you can see what other people can interact and how in, in which circumstances and I think it was a good selection because everybody puts something in the table and has the distrust. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could have another ending mm -hmm. that someone have, has decided to work alone all the way through it without interaction. It could have happened. It wouldn't yeah. happen. Uh, yeah, it's it's possible. Mm. Possibilities mm. are <laughs> endless. Yeah, endless. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's uh, the process, the selection process is important. How can we see that the, these people is going to to put something mm. themselves and make it happen? Yeah. So I. I have been in other processes, maybe not residences because this is my first one, but workshops that the people want to continue with their own processes, movement, without maybe sharing mm -hmm. movements. So it's, uh, it can go mm. go any direction. In any direction, yes. So I think um, I just want to bring it back to the curated yeah. nature of this because this kind of really leads to it. I mean, this is something. <coughs> something that um, Caldevira have done previously and I was invited as a you know to present this project proposal I uh, I presented it to them and the fact was it was it always a curated residency which mm -hmm. fitted with what they do but they've started here and I wondered if you had any thoughts or, or, or responses in terms um, of it being a curated residency open question. I think uh, <coughs> it's been <coughs> it's been pretty pretty clear um, from the start, which is, is down, down to yourself, of um, a subtle presence and this room to breathe, and that has uh, that's that's cultivated the the processes that have happened and. Um, I, I, can, I can only speak for myself, of course, but um, I think um, if, it, if it had been a kind of really intensive, regimented, you have to go through these particular 
seminars or you know exercises da, 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 before you can actually get to your practice and do anything then you know I don't think that end point of getting to the practice and doing anything would happen for me mm -hmm. I think it would be kind of you know um, it would be yeah, it, would, it would all be filtered out basically the, the essence would be filtered out due to this over curation this mm -hmm. um, um, so I think the um, the, the the way and approach that the, um, this residency has been curated has been a a very fruitful and forward thinking model for um, for space space to inhabit and space to interact and because of that space and um, the I, the the artistic environment has been. Uh, delved into it and as much of, of an entirety as it can be in such a short period of time. Okay. Maybe uh, an important part of the curating process was also the um, selection of the resident because I think we didn't have to force the link uh, between uh, your, uh, our practices. Mm -hmm. It was um, evident and uh, it um, evolved during the, the, the two weeks uh, because I think we, we had something um, uh, that we could share and, uh, and work with uh, t together. Um, it can be the drawing, the relation with uh, images and, and sound. Uh, I think it, it, was, um, uh, it was not uh, due to randomness but, uh, but um, made uh, uh, with uh, the selection of the, of the resident. It's an interesting thing about the a curated residency. I don't know if this managed, like, curation is usually of a show. Mm. The specific picking of artists who will, whose works, not just them, but whose works will operate well together in a show, whatever, based on a theme. Mm. So this, and then residencies, don't necessarily work well. I mean, one that I was on, I think, had a bit of that. Um, but there's sometimes just you know six artists occupy the studios and get to know each other socially, but could be working entirely separately. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting model. And then in terms of the notion of an exhibition that would accompany a curation, there might be more, yeah, you know, thinking to be done there, like how it's. The, I think the studio open day went very well open the studio but uh it was real you know we were all working in our studio but how a show would emerge of a curated residency or should it is the residency the show so it's um it's an interesting thing two weeks but isn't the time for that but perhaps a longer one that kind of culmination could be addressed or yeah, the two yeah the two week model. I mean, it. I suppose the intention was to have to go with that initial gut response that that it's a, it's supposed to be an intensive you know and it was what I envisioned. It was an intensive process. It was never to uh, isolate an artistic product or outcome or performative outcome. It was about. You know, the one thing I ask is just pitch me an idea. I just want to know. I want you to think about think about ideas. Um, you know, I I worked with the uh, the lean strategies that inspired me in terms of my own research, and I tried, <coughs> just trying to trying them out in different artistic contexts. Um, and it seemed to me, you know, this, this whole concept, I, I was thinking when I first devised it, I was thinking this could be two days or it could be two weeks. And, and, and because I'm working within dance and we have just, you know, residencies in dance, you know, usually it's a maximum of two weeks you'd get in terms of space because space is valuable and they can't really kind of hand it over to one artist for, for such lengths of time. So, yeah, the idea was like two days. Put some artists in a room, see what happens. You know, it's it's kind of, you know, um, and then we've got two weeks, and yes, it is a short space of time. And I suppose you asked me earlier what would happen if we had another week. 
Um, yeah, if we had if we had another week, um, what would happen or what would I want? And I guess I want to put the same question back on you as well. If we had another two weeks, you know, what would you take from it? Now, my concern, if I may express this first, would be that you'd all go down to isolating and developing the product and having the outcome and, and, and you know, you'd feel the pressure to make something if you had another week or two. Um, and I don't, I didn't want you to feel that pressure. I didn't, you know, I didn't want you to make something. Um, it's about the research, um, about giving you time to do that. So my question for all of you, and we're going to have to finish this up soon, but my question is if we did have another two weeks, if we were to extend it, um, what would you anticipate would happen? What would you want to happen in that two weeks? I'd like to see the sun, by the way. Yeah. It's going to happen next it's week. It's been a bit grey. I we spoke seen to the this sun. man earlier on. <laughs> he told me the sun isn't coming. Oh, really? It's not? More or less. Oh, it is going. No. No, it's not. It's not going to happen. Okay. Um, Maybe in Stockholm. So. In Stockholm, yeah, when you go home. Yeah. <laughs> um, Two weeks. What would you achieve? Or what would you anticipate? Or what would you want to get there? I'd like to answer it very quickly from MDL's answers, just, yeah. I'd just like the microscope to go down further. Yeah. That's it. Okay. That's what I, that's what I could anticipate. Like, you know, you see more detail and fragments and defects and uh, interferences and just keep going down and down and down and pulling them out and pulling them out, you know. Yeah. My only uh, fear would be over, uh, uh, overexposure of possibilities yeah. and crippled by possibility. That's that's that would be my concern as well in that sense. That that you would spend so much time kind of focusing and focusing in already you, you there's so many other possibilities that have come out, so many collaborations, so many opportunities to pursue lines of thought that perhaps if there is a point when you have to go stop. Where are we now? Let's make something of this before we, we, it explodes, you know. Mm. But anyway, other other responses. If you had two more weeks, what? <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, we are we are gathering uh, images, sound. So I think we will try to to do um, an object, uh, a video. Uh, uh, I don't know, but something that can be called or finished or maybe uh, another take another pass and try um, to do what we have done or started to, to do uh, inside uh, uh, to try to do it outside uh, I think it, it could be something interesting and um, I think we, we share also this um, uh, desire to, to go outside <coughs> and try in a different context, uh, what we have done uh, in the in the studio. And you mean out, out of doors? Yes. So the grey skies yeah. would suit your practice yeah. particularly well. <laughs> you sense. could project yeah. on them. You could project on them. <laughs> yeah, okay. But then again, you're saying, I'd like to have an artistic product that I want to take from there to there. That's what you're yeah. saying. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I would like to do the same that Jamie yeah, saw, so, um, putting in microscope my practice, trying to be more clear, more identify more what I'm doing, mm -hmm. what the process has been done, with my uh, capability of see possibilities in that way. But I agree with you, go forward with going out, <coughs> maybe try to incorporate the community, maybe by doing the same in other space without development, maybe put mm -hmm. it out with workshops or something like that. Uh, 
but I would like more. We are people, so interaction between us, know better each other, because it's the only way that you can cooperate and interact. Discussions. What do you think of this and this? Even if you want to do a product, maybe it's not there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have to have that process to to see the human being there and interact with with that person. Mm -hmm. You cannot be doing a product only because you want to. Mm -hmm. You cannot force it. You have to feel that is functioning in the social aspects. Okay. So that's I. <coughs> I yeah, I'd agree with Jamie actually. Um, just tight it. I mean, between yesterday's morning session with Florent and the evening, we decided to focus on a few things. We did an improv, we focused on a few things. It still went pretty broad. A few new things came up. So I'd say, do it again. Focus on those certain things, find it. Yeah, I mean, just keep doing the same thing, but with the reflection. Doing it again tightening the thing, making it leaner in a sense, mm -hmm. learning to find enough interest in the essential and not feeling the desire to um, go beyond it, to, to loosen it. To, I mean, there's no harm in it. It's a process. That there was a point we could have stopped last night, went on, a few new things. Yeah, I mean, I'd be quite happy to just keep... Because I think we've kind of found a working... Uh, like, a maybe a bit of a rhythm now. And a, I think Florin and Jamie are working yeah. a lot more together now. I mean, it's even interesting to think initially, Florin, you were there, and Jamie was here. And then you came together due to the technical repositioning of the screen. And then that, that new neighbourhood <laughs> influenced this greater fusion which you know well, two nights ago became really excited yeah it's, it's just keep doing the same thing recognize i mean the sculpture became went more into the space mm. there's the movement became more integrated with the tension sculptures um yeah just to keep working mm. on it um Open studio, yeah, if you want to appeal to the community, that's for the residents, the organisers yeah, to do. Yeah. I don't mind that at all. I mean, I'm happy enough to let people come in and see and, and talk to them. But that's another, that's the responsibility of other people. And if the artists can really get to focus, well, that will in, inevitably interest people. Mm. Okay. Any last words? <coughs> I'm intrigued to know what you've been doing throughout this whole conversation. <laughs> Bodies. Bodies in space. Dancing on in the space of pages. <laughs> yes, thank yeah. you. Any last words? I'll be back. You'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely are we watching the sacrifice tonight? <laughs> or are we working? I think we're probably working because time Thanks is short. Hello. Hello. I think that was the best way to finish this uh, conversation. Thank you very much, Jamie, for that. Yeah.